much welcome and thank you for your effort and your commitment in being being here tonight tonight is going to be a very relaxed session very informal i don't want this to become a stiff and formal thing so next time please feel free to come barefoot shorts t-shirts i just want to give you some background of why why did i decide to have these kind of kind of meetings the Lord spoke to me two or three months ago because all of a sudden in Pretoria specifically, there started to circulate a lot of false doctrines that's busy taking the church by storm. And uh, what really concerned me is that some of the people that started to preach this message is well-known people within the city of Pretoria. I saw it also manifested in other cities across South, South Africa. And there was just an a urgency in my heart, in my spirit, that as believers that really are serious about pursuing the accuracy of the word, that we need to begin to come together to equip, to discuss, to dialogue, and to really raise a standard also in the spirit in terms of what is what is what is happening um, so why this round table is i believe the lord has directed me to establish and create this platform of equal footing for the discussion of doctrine and a place where pastors leaders believers of different streams can come together and can commit both relationships with, with one another and also fellowship with one another, but above all, to come to a place where we can openly and freely study and discuss uh, doctrine. Now, the purpose of all of this is for us to have this round table to give everyone that comes and participates equal standing in the discussion. So there's no one that's bigger or higher or more important than, than the other one and that you can have liberty and freedom to contribute your perspectives and your ideas concerning the doctrine that we will be presenting freely and fully to the whole process of dialogue that, that follows. Um, we will facilitate this, 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 this meeting by somebody that will be the convener or appointed for the purpose of this meeting. I will not always be sitting here and taking control of the morning, the meeting. We will ask some others as well to take the opportunity to do so. And the frequency will be on a weekly basis. Why do you, may, you ask me on a weekly basis? Because I have found that if we want to establish and make a change and establish a culture, we can't do this once in a month. There's got to be a regular coming together, meeting together around the word. From my side, I commit myself that we will not go later than, than 9 o'clock. Even if we're still busy, we will cut off at 9 o'clock and uh, we will start on time. So if you're late, you're going to miss, you're gonna miss, miss, miss out. Um, and uh, we will be using this venue until we outgrow the capacity of this venue and then we will look for something something else. Then you might ask me what is the doctrinal stand of where we're going to have these these meetings. Basically it's very simple, it's the scriptures, it's the Bible. Um, will be the foundation of all discussions and dialogue and then we say that the application from scripture must be done according to the recognized standard of exegesis and scripture interpret interpretation. You cannot twist scripture to fit your whatever you want to, to present. Um, I suggest that for the purpose of these discussions that we make use of versions of the, of the Bible such as the King James, the New King James, the Amplified, the Classic Amplified, the New American Standard, and I'm comfortable with the uh, ESV as well, 
I prefer that we do not use paraphrased scriptures such as the, the message, the passion, what was the other one? The mirror. The mirror, because there's a lot of inaccurate New Living Translation as well. Um, and uh, I've seen so much, especially of this false doctrine currently, that's being founded on these mirror and passion translations where they weave these scriptures together. So how is it going to work? Going forward, we will have uh, somebody, a pastor or a leader, to do a 20-minute presentation of a specific topic. And thereafter, we will open the floor for dialogue. So everybody can, par can partake and present and respond to what was said, either to expand, either to ask questions, either to say, but I don't agree, so why don't you agree? So we engage that from, from Scripture. So the whole purpose is for us is to gather around and to use this foundation that we have here to identify false doctrines in the city and then to dismantle the doctrines. We don't attack people, we don't attack churches, we don't attack ministries or organizations. We want to go and look what is it that they are saying, what is it that they believe, and then go through a process of saying, well, what is the scripture saying? And do why can we not walk and stand in agreement with what they, what they are doing? I want to specifically emphasize that no person is to be attacked in the process, but we need to uproot every false altar that is being erected in, in our city. Then, some people ask me, but what about the other pastoral fellowships and networks in the, in, in the city? And specifically because we're in the Moot, we've got an organization or a network here that's called Christ for the Moot. I don't know if you know about them, but Christy? Not. It's called the CMC or Love Pretoria, Love Pretoria Moot or Love Tswane is the greater organization. And we want to say that we want to be complementary to all the other networks of and forums that is currently we don't want you to look at this and see we are separating ourselves from the rest of the body um, and disconnect our purpose is not to bring about the vision in the body of christ but rather to establish deep and lasting covenantal relationships with everybody that come together around this this table then just for the sake of discipline and, and, and order, I'm going to ask the following, that all cell phones be switched off for the duration of the meeting, or them being on silent, that we will continue to respect one another. If you don't agree with somebody, there's no reason to become aggressive. And also then, if it so happens that there's <coughs> any confidential thing that is being shared on a personal, on a personal level, that it will stay here. That we won't go outside and say, oh, did you hear what that pastor went through? Uh, we don't want that. This must be a place of safety for every person that, that, that comes here. Uh, <clears throat> we need to remain focused and present in the moment of what we are, what we are busy with. And then, very important is, if we're going to use this as a platform of dialogue, there must not be the tendency to disengage when time gets tough. If you're in a place and there's disagreement and people are challenging what you are saying, don't sit back and say, no, I'm not going to say any words mm -hmm. either because I get, I've blown up my little lippy, you know. Um, we cannot come to a place where we say, okay, I will agree to disagree with you. That is unacceptable. So we need to work through whatever differences we find or disagreements that there is. We're all mature people. And go to the scriptures and see at the end of the day we need to find the solution in terms of what the scriptures are saying. Are you guys comfortable with this? Okay. Then I say honesty and openness in what you believe. And what you believe must be supported from scripture understanding that you must be able to support your belief from Scripture with accurate exegesis. Listen to others that are sharing or speaking actively, 
in order to engage in the dialogue and again maintain respect towards one another even if you have a different opinion and be willing to be challenged and to embrace the challenge, change your position where needed if you find it's being proven that the real stand is being inaccurate in terms of doctrine. And then I also ask, be on time at all times and stay for the duration of the meeting. There's a tendency, especially amongst the pastors, they come in, they do a 20 minute hit and then they go out the, out the door. We want this to be a dedicated uh, time where we really dedicate ourselves for what we are going to do. And then I said we are contribute to the expenses and grace carriers presenting through free, free will offerings. I didn't bring an offering back tonight, but I want you to establish also a culture of blessing one another. So if somebody is, the, is presenting, let us then bless that person with the offering or anything. It's a free will thing. You're not forced to do it, but is anybody got any issues with what I'll share this for? Is everybody comfortable? Okay. All right.